The lower leg circular cast is usually applied for ankle, metatarsal, and distal tibia fractures and soft tissue injuries. In this presentation, the application of the lower leg circular cast will be demonstrated. The objective of the exercise is to show the application of the lower leg circular cast, a plaster cast, to stabilize the fractures or soft tissue injuries. The lower leg circular cast is indicated for fractures and soft tissue injuries around the foot and ankle. To apply the lower leg circular cast, the following materials are needed. A stockinette or tubular gauze bandage, scissors, cotton wool for undercast padding, plaster of Paris bandages in rolls of varying widths, and water or another wetting agent. The water should be tepid or lukewarm with an ideal temperature of between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that colder water or a bandage that is wetter will allow for an increased working time, while warmer water or a bandage that is drier reduces the working time. The patient should be seated with the knee over the edge of the table. When reducing the fracture, the leg may hang freely. However, after reduction, the foot must be supported at the metatarsals, either by an assistant or with the knee, as shown here. The patient's knee should be slightly flexed, while both the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles should be relaxed. The foot remains plantigrade, and the second toe should be in line with the tibia to prevent inversion or eversion of the foot. The distal border is located at the metatarsal heads. The toes should remain open. The proximal border of the lower leg circular cast lies below the tibial tuberosity in the popliteal fossa. An easy landmark is three to four fingers below the popliteal crease. Care must be taken to avoid pressure on the fibular head and neck area so as to prevent pressure to the peroneal nerve that would cause neuropraxia or nerve damage. To begin, a stockinette is applied and cut slightly longer than the final cast will be. Beginning at the distal border, the cotton wool is gently wound on, once around the foot, making sure that the edge does not cut into the 90 degree bend of the ankle, and then around the ankle in a figure of eight. The cotton wool is wound towards the knee, giving an overlap of 50%. The overlap creates a double layer of padding, which is sufficient in most cases. The cotton wool extends slightly beyond the planned length of the cast, so that by folding down the stockinette, the end of the cast will be padded. Additional cotton wool padding is applied over the malleoli and the heel to protect against pressure points causing pressure sores. It should be kept in mind that when more padding is applied, there will be less support to the injury site. Before the first bandage is wetted, the free end is doubled over to provide additional support for the base of the foot. The plaster bandage is dipped into the water. The excess water is removed by gently squeezing the ends on both sides. Starting with the bottom of the foot, the plaster bandage is wrapped around the ankle in a figure of eight. The bandage is passed once over the heel and then towards the knee with a 50% overlap, 
in the same manner as the cotton wool. A second plaster bandage is applied, beginning where the first one ended. It continues distally with a second figure of eight around the ankle. The loose end of the stockinette is now folded over the proximal edge of the cast. The extra plaster covering the toes should be noted. It ensures there will be adequate support for the metatarsal heads. The excess plaster is now removed with the scissors and the stockinette is folded over the distal end of the cast. A third plaster bandage is used in the same manner as the second one and secures the loose ends of the stockinette. It should be noted that the plaster is still soft and can be gently molded to the curve of the tibia, the Achilles tendon, and the malleoli. One or both hands may be used, as shown here. To ensure that the foot remains plantigrade, Gentle pressure is applied to the metatarsals. The pressure should be continued until the plaster sets. However, the plaster will not achieve full strength for 36 hours. The lower leg circular cast is not intended to be a weight-bearing cast, so the patient will need to use crutches. The foot should be kept elevated when possible to prevent additional swelling. The exercises for the patient may now be explained and demonstrated. They include quads exercises and flexing the toes. The application of the lower leg circular cast is now complete.